Ted Scambos, you are with the National Snow and Ice Data Center? Yes, I am. I'm the lead scientist at the National Snow and Ice Data Center. It's a part of the University of Colorado. Now, what's been going on in the last year in the snow and ice world is really pretty dramatic. We've had um, an extremely low sea ice um, extent in the summer. The sea ice melted back to a level that we have not seen in the satellite record at all. And so what we're seeing is a gradual progression towards uh, ocean in the north that has no ice on it whatsoever in summer. Right now we're about 60% of the way there. And what we need to do is keep monitoring that area year by year and see how this is going to impact climate because it's sure to impact climate when so much of the white part of the earth near the pole turns to dark ocean. It changes how much heat is in the air and how the air circulates around the pole. The other big thing that happened was that in Greenland we saw this phenomenal summer melt season where melt reached to the very highest part of this two mile thick ice sheet and even where they had never seen melt before in all the years that they've been driving across Greenland and setting up these various spaces, there were areas that melted for the first time. That was in the summer of 2012 in the north. Now in the south, one of the big things that's happened is that over the last decade, not just this year, we've been seeing a tremendous amount of ice lost from a couple of areas in Antarctica. One of those areas is um, near the south end of the Pacific Ocean and what it's seeing is warmer water reaching in below the ice and melting the base of the ice and causing it to flow out more rapidly than it used to. There's another area and it's sort of that tip of your thumb if this is Antarctica, it's this area up in here, the warmest part of Antarctica and that's seeing a warmer air temperature, a warmer climate and we've been watching that area for a long time. It showed some big, big changes back in the early 2000s and there's an area now that's sort of next in line to change and we think that that's going to uh, break apart here in the next couple of years and we've been going into the field there and setting up instruments and um, we're ready to see uh, whether or not this area continues the trend of uh, breakups and, and a lot of ice being lost. You're talking about the Larsen B ice I shelf. am exactly, the mm -hmm. Larsen B and uh, that whole northern peninsula area. Um, Overall, what we're doing is monitoring how the ice sheets are contributing to sea level rise. And this is still the early stages, so the amount of sea level rise coming off the ice sheets is about, let's see if I can do this. I, <laughs> you can see it's an exciting time at AGU. It's hard right. to hold your fingers that close without touching, but it's about a millimeter or so per year. Now, as I said, it's early stages, and by the end of the century, that could well be a couple of centimeters per year. And at that point, we're already going to be in for quite a bit of sea level rise, and there'll be nothing that we can do about it. What we need to do is keep those fingers close together so that we don't have to have a situation where we're needing to readjust how we have our infrastructure set up near the coast, um, all of the property that's near the coast, all of the risk that's associated with storm surges, all of that goes up tremendously as sea level starts to rise even a little bit. So it's not too soon to act on climate change. It's not too soon to start slowing this pace of warming and change in the ice sheets down. Is it too late? It, it, it's definitely too late for some of the effects. And I think a big part of what happens this century is us choosing how much we're going to adapt to, that we're going to buy more air conditioners, or we're going to plant things in different places, or we're going to have to deal with higher insurance rates if you live near the coast and how much we're actually going to push our economy and the way we create energy in the direction of cleaner and more sustainable fuels. There's no doubt we have to do this. There's no doubt that by the next century, it's going to have to be all about sustainability, or we won't be able to support as many people on Earth as we expect to have. Um, that's what I've been doing. That's perfect.